Hi everyone, I'm Rhonda. And I'm Jim. And we are RV, RV with, with the Maracas. This video is a review of our 2018 adventures with our RV. I especially liked rewatching our videos because they reminded me of the fun and the adventures we had in the past year. YouTube makes it really easy to share those memories. We have always liked traveling and hiking, and we are retired now and have more time to enjoy glamping in our Thor axis. This channel started as a place for me to put videos that I made using my new Mavic Air drone that I got in July 2018. And it was then named Tamuqua Forest Productions after our homestead. But then later, after we got the RV in October, we changed the name to RVing with the Maracas. <laughs> and have been doing RV related videos every week since then. We're very excited to share our lucky 13 adventures and mishaps. We look forward to your comments and hopefully meeting you on the road one day. Enjoy this video as we recap our 2018 adventures. Our first adventure was in August when we picked up our new Thor Axis from La Mesa RV in Fort Myers, 300 miles from our home. We decided to camp overnight at Mayaka River State Park to break up the drive, which was quite an experience since we had never driven an RV before. I drove the RV and Joe followed me on our truck. I drove so slow, I was afraid to go over 55 miles per hour on the interstate. We enjoyed glamping at Mayaka because we'd been there so many times before, and it's just an hour drive from the dealer. Mayaka is one of our favorite state parks. We were happy to make it our first RV video. It was mostly drone shots and pictures set to music. Our second adventure was the Fort Clinch State Park, again in August. This was a beautiful, undeveloped beach north of Jacksonville. One of our first RVing mishaps was leaving the main power <laughs> switch off while driving home. We thought something was terribly wrong with the new RV, drove home without the radio, backup, or side cameras. They won't work if the switch is off, which we figured out after we got home. This video was also mostly drone footage and pictures of great scenery set to music with some added park information. Done by Joe. We're so glad we visited this park and recommend it to anyone that likes unpopulated beaches or old Civil <laughs> War forts. We didn't do a video for our third adventure at Swanee River Hideaway Campground. We're not really sure why, but this was a very nice private park. We enjoyed a nice dinner with our family. Swanee River is beautiful and there's really a nice boardwalk through a swamp that goes to a dock right on the river where you can watch the boats go by. During this trip, our stereo stopped working. <laughs> it just froze. We had a green screen. So then we, after a day or two, we learned about the uh, reset button on the dash, pushed it in with a paper clip, and it worked fine. Our fourth adventure was at Little Talbot Island State Park in September. This was our first two-night stay. This park was beautiful and another great undeveloped beach just north of Jacksonville. We got more experience with the drone, enjoyed watching the surfers at the beach. This was really my favorite campground of 2018, so we highly recommend this to anyone. Our fifth trip was our third beach camping trip. We went to St. George Island State Park in the Florida Panhandle. There were gorgeous beaches, but way too many mosquitoes, and we forgot the bug spray, which was terrible. We learned the sad fact that flying drones is not allowed in most Florida state parks. I was stopped by a ranger mm -hmm. while I was flying the drone over our campsite. He pulled up their internal website to show me the rules, as it wasn't on the public website or even posted in the park. This was our first video with us talking. We had pictures of the campsite and the beautiful beach. It looked great, but like Rhonda said, the mosquitoes were terrible. But we highly recommend it. It was a beautiful park. Our 
Our sixth trip was to Ocean Pond in the Osceola National Forest. This was a nice and peaceful campground with paved lakefront campsites. We used our Weber Q grill and made pork chops on the grill with apples and this was a recipe that we got from the Fire Escape Griller on the YouTube channel. It was great. This video featured kayak trip around the lake and drone footage of this great campground and lake. We had our first experience using the dump station. It was easy, thank goodness. Hey there. Very nice park here. trip was to Wakiwa Spring State Park outside of Orlando in October. The park was full of Florida hills and the biking was challenging. It really was. It was our first trip to one of the awesome freshwater natural springs in Florida. This trip we had a special visit from our daughter Rachel and our son-in-law. We used our new RV with the Moroccan logo for the first time in this video. It was so hot on the way there, we had to use the generator while driving so that we could run the coach AC to keep cool. Mm -hmm. If you're in Central Florida, this is a great real Florida place to visit. Yeah. It's a very nice river. Eighth on the list was Olino State Park near Gainesville in October. We enjoyed our first scheduled event, the Alligator Warrior Festival. We had locally brewed beers named after the Seminole Indians. My sister and brother-in-law came over to visit and we did some hiking along the Santa Fe River and saw where it goes underground for three miles. Joe did a great job providing narration and history of the park in this video along with live action footage of the battle reenactment. The Alligator Warrior Festival features 1830s era Florida militia and Seminole Indian groups that reenact the Battle of San Falasco Hammock, which was part of the Second Seminole War in 1832. Check out Wikipedia for more information. Our ninth trip was to Jekyll Island Campground. This was the first time leaving Florida and camping in Georgia. And it was also the first time we stopped and took a longer break boondocking. This was a beautiful island with great biking trails and gorgeous beaches. We had some issues with the toll booth to get on the island. It was not RV friendly. You couldn't reach it. And the pricing <laughs> was, so was weird. This was the first time we used the time lapse feature of our new GoPro camera. The video had a scrolling table of contents and we did the pros and cons at the end. For some reason, this is by far our most popular video. It is an awesome place to visit. Jekyll Island, the first beach we found. Kind of crazy. Sure, a lot of trees down. The trees along this bike path were beautiful. They're huge. Oaks, pines. The main swimming beaches are right on the main road, but these two areas can't be seen from the road. You have to walk in, and it's well worth doing. Well, there's no sign, but this must be Driftwood Beach, because look at all that wood. Our tenth trip was to Disney Fort Wilderness in Orlando to see our daughter and son-in-law and go to on the Avatar rides in Animal Kingdom. We were there in November, and there were lots of holiday decorations, and we happened to be there for Mickey's 90th birthday. Unfortunately, we had to wait three hours to get on the Avatar ride, but it was the best ride ever. Mm -hmm. Our site was small but really nice with gravel and concrete. This was the largest and most expensive campground we've been to, but it was totally worth it. We were lucky to get the site because it stays full much of the year. We visited Lake Ridge Winery on the way home, which was a nice relaxing change from Disney. 
I think people that like Disney have extra holiday spirit. Even a Grinch like me enjoyed seeing all the decorations. It was amazing riding around the campground just how many families were camping there. The campground has a lot to do that we didn't get to. Our 11th trip was to Swanee River State Park in Live Oak, Florida in November. This was our first cold trip. We got down to freezing. It was the end of November. We really enjoyed the river hiking and other trails. These were some of the nicest trails we've seen. While it was not really a mishap, the sewer connection at the site was way too high to use since it was higher than our drain connection. The park is a good example of real Florida and is a great place to visit. The campground was quiet, not crowded, relaxing, and even close to home. Really big old cedar tree. Still green up at the top. Besides this flock of turkeys and other birds, I particularly enjoyed the awesome trees we saw. They're not redwoods, but big pines, oaks, cypress, cedar, and holly are all nice. So this is Lime Sink Run. It reminds us of River Rise at Olino State Park where the Santa Fe River goes underground. Number 12 was to Payne's Prairie Preserve State Park just south of Gainesville in December. This was our favorite campsite because it was large, level, and private, even though it was very cold. This was the first time using our Verizon hotspot so Rhonda could watch Netflix and YouTube videos. In this video, we did a fireside chat segment and decided on how we were going to add states to our U.S. map when traveling in the RV. Payne's Prairie is a large park and we enjoyed bird watching, hiking, and biking. Mm -hmm. But this was really the first time we missed having mm -hmm. a car because we couldn't get to some of the other parts of the park because they were far away and you couldn't walk there because you had to go through a swamp. And you couldn't bike there because it was way too far. Yes. We had Site 50 in the Puck Puggy campground. It was the last site before the dump station and dumpsters, but that really was not an issue as the sites are large and private. Our site was mostly level with quiet neighbors. We enjoyed it. Rhonda, what are you doing? I am watching YouTube videos on my outside TV with um, our new hotspot. <laughs> That's correct. Yeah, it's very nice. It's big though, it's really big. I wish we had a car. There's two hikes that looked really nice, but they're way, you would really have to drive to them. Well, yeah, you have to drive. You have to drive to them. It's a big park, but it's split in two by the prairie. prairie. That's really a big swamp. Right. And so you have to drive to get to the other side. Our final trip in 2018 was lucky number 13. The trip was to Skidaway Island State Park near Savannah in Georgia. This was our first trip with our tow car, and the only mishap was that when we got home, we noticed that one of the locking pins was missing. <laughs> Luckily, the car was fine, and we will never do that again. Nope. That's how you learn. Mm -hmm. This was a great park with lots of history, hiking, and biking trails. We had been to Savannah several times before, so we didn't spend much time in the city. We visited Tybee Island, and we visited the Holiday Lights Festival at the Georgia Botanical Gardens. This was also our 37th wedding anniversary celebration. It was, all, it was a really nice park and highly recommended. It's, this is another one of our popular videos. By the 1890s, Skidaway was abandoned until after alcohol prohibition, when the island became a haven for moonshiners and smugglers. Later, most of the island was purchased for pulpwood, by Union Bag and Paper Company. The first bridge to the island was not built until 1971. This is a liquor steel site. During the 1930s, this hole contained one of the 31 liquor stills sites on park property. This is located on the Sandpiper Trail Loop. So, moonshiners, breaking the law. I hope you enjoyed our reminiscing of our 2018 RV trips. We have learned so much over the past year and really enjoyed all of the parks where we stayed and survived all of our mishaps. It's hard to really pick favorites, so we won't. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> we have more videos to share in the next weeks as we embark on new parks outside of Florida. Stay tuned. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel, RV with the Moroccans. Yay! Yay.